Good evening, everybody. Matrix here, and here is my watch list for December 7th. Okay, so uh, it did take me a little longer than usual to prep this watch list tonight. I have an amazing watch list for you guys. It's 1.05 a.m. right now. Uh, the futures market just opened for the very next day. As you can see, we are gapping down a little bit from uh, yesterday. So tomorrow, I do expect a little pop into this resistance area of 2,700 and then coming right back down. Um, well, I wouldn't say I expect, uh, the plan is like, so, so 27, uh, key resistance mark and then come back down. It might pop over a little bit and, uh, it might have another day to run and have this nine EMA catch up. We don't know yet. Um, with that said, uh, I want to take a look at the spy as well. So let's bring in the spy. Uh, as you can see today, the SPY popped up. Uh, it sold off, gapped down hard today. And then eventually during uh, late afternoon, it started picking back up. Let's take a look at the intraday here. And uh, hopefully I can explain this little uh, rally to you. Um, basically, I called this gap down yesterday and, uh, and uh, the fade. Um, the reason why it came back up and rallied is I believe the news, uh, the feds came out with news that they're going to slow the pace of hiking interest rates. Now, with that said, it, uh, it seems like good news, but slowing the pace of hiking interest rates, whereas uh, decreasing interest rate is a big difference here. It's basically they're saying something to kind of calm the nerves of uh, the, the market right now. But it's actually kind of like the same type of news that uh, the G20 summit had with uh, Trump and China talking about halting the tariffs. Um, in actual sense, to me, it sounds more like, a, I wouldn't say fluff news. It's just, it doesn't, it's not news that can be used to uh, tell people and convince people that, oh, we are going to come back into a bullish market here because we are definitely not. We are definitely inside a bear market and into correction territory. Okay. Uh, with that said, um, any pop uh, in this current market condition right now, I, I personally uh, have always had a problem with longing and trusting stuff. So uh, in this current market, I think what the big money wants to do or the smart money is they would want to short or sell into any big pop. So uh, coming out with news of slowing down the interest rates hikes, uh, basically it's kind of like uh, enticing all the dumb money, all the retail traders to uh, start buying in and kind of like alleviating their fears. But for me being a very cynical person, I think there's always an ulterior motive here. So as this uh, market comes back up a little bit, I think uh, at any point in given time, this uh, the smart money will come back in and hammer it down and sell it off because uh, the bigger picture is, and the truth is, we are in the bear market, all right? So with that said, um, Basically, all the big name stocks that follow the market real well, your FANG stocks, your, uh, yeah, uh, basically your FANG stocks, they will probably follow the market as well. So if you want to trade those tomorrow, uh, you should be keeping half an eye on the market and how it's moving. Um, with that said, let's go into my watch list. Tonight I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tickers for you guys, with six of them being earnings plays. Now, uh, we are still in the earnings season, so um, we had a really big list to filter out, or I personally had a really big list to filter out. Um, but uh, I did manage to bring it down from about 15 stocks to cut it down in half. And uh, tomorrow, depending on the pre-market action, um, how, how stocks react, uh, liquidities, uh, relative volume, pre-market volume, and the spread, they're all going to play a factor in my choosing of uh, bringing down my list to about 
four tickers that I will be watching. Um, let's get into it. MongoDB. MDB had a uh, earnings reaction, I believe, on the 4th, right? Let me see here. Yeah, December 4th. So uh, basically, they beat revenues and they beat the guidance, okay? And they, they basically beat the street's expectation. However, I was looking at this company and they weren't beating on the positive note they were this company in itself is still losing money they basically are saying that they the street had an expectation of this company losing a lot more money than they should however they're not and hence uh the stock is on a rally right now with that said this company is uh very overextended and overvalued in my personal opinion now of course we know uh, personal opinion doesn't really matter in, in the market, but uh, we can definitely base um, a, a thesis on it. So um, I'm looking at the stock. Just give me a sec here. I'm looking at the stock and it's running on an earnings, earnings winner or earnings win reaction. And this stock is hitting 52 week highs. Okay, it's also kind of like a recent IPO. It's only IPO uh, a year and a few months. Okay, so with IPOs like this and how it's reaching up so high, I am uh, I'm definitely kind of iffy on telling people that I will be shorting it right away. With the price action coming up like this, I think this is more of a it's a breakout play, right? So uh, the stock today, it dipped to $80, held, and that's where the smart money started buying, right? As you can see here on the intraday chart. And then as it held the dip, it made a higher low. Okay, now also looking at uh, the prior red days, uh, these candles here, um, I am looking at uh, thinking that short sellers did pile in a lot of them are basically getting squeezed, especially on the fourth, right? On this day right here where we had this massive doji. Um, basically, this doji was an indication of a fight between the bulls and bears and shorts uh, hammered it in and the longs were fighting it as well. And eventually today, uh, right at the break of 54 to 54.40, uh, sorry, 54 to 54. 50s uh it was a breakout and the bears oh sorry the bulls uh actually won this fight okay so i want to mark off 54 50s right now and i want to show you how i came about how how i came about this uh thesis right uh i'm looking at the intraday chart today and i'm looking at this massive green candle pop it's basically buying this breakout of 5450s right see all this volume coming in and then once this happened shorts just got squeezed right when this candle popped up when the big money bought in uh we had a quick pullback and it held a higher low from here and basically squeeze 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 all the way up uh and the stock closed up highs at 92 dollars today with that said there are other catalysts for this stock as well now, the three main catalysts is basically analysts came out with buy ratings today and uh, the ratings are as such. Uh, Needham came out with a buy rating target of 91. Uh, Monesk, Monesk, Crespi and Hart came out with a buy rating target at 110. And then Can Accord uh, Gen Genuity came out with a buy rating target of 95. So with that said, how will I play this? Looking at the chart right now, it's uh, definitely very bullish. The stock finished up on its highs and uh, late day it got bought right back up. So I am thinking that whoever bought around this area, they are anticipating a gap up. I will anticipate a gap up as well. And with this gap up right at the open, I think uh, whoever bought late day here is gonna take profits and start selling this thing. Um, looking on the daily chart, I am specifically looking at something like, uh, hmm. 
something along the lines of this, right? Okay, if it doesn't gap up, if it gaps down, like, hold on, let me, let me circle it. There is actually a few different scenarios this can happen tomorrow. Okay, we can either see this kind of action happen, right? Uh, it gaps up and then it pops and then it sells off. And this is the exact thesis that I have in mind. Now, with a stock like this running crazy, I don't want to short out the gates. Uh, I do think the stock is going to break its highs of 92. And because we are hitting 52 week highs, there really is no chart history of telling me where the next resistance mark is. So I'm going to have to basically come up with um, hypotheses and, uh, and uh, smart estimates on where I think these guys will start to pull profits. If I were buying here today at around the $82.50 to $80 area, I will be watching $92.50 as that will be my $10 mark. Uh, that ten dollar mark where I gained, uh, that's where I will start to pull profits. However, if I don't pull profits there, I will be looking at every psychological whole number and round number, right? So we have ninety five and also ninety seven fifty, and finally the one hundred. Okay. Uh, I also want to mention that basically. Um, this stock is 85% institutionally owned. So with analysts coming out with ratings like these, they are basically, from my cynical standpoint, to, I, I'm, I'm thinking that they come out with these ratings trying to bait in the retail buyers uh, to get the stock up to that target so that they, the institutions, will be able to sell from those targets, right? They probably bought in here today at the $80 mark and that's probably their target. That's why they're coming out with these ratings. Um, the closest rating I want to look at is the 95 mark, okay? Because that's a very key psychological whole number as well. I'm not sure if it has what it takes to reach the 100 mark tomorrow because to in order for it to do that, it would have to squeeze really hard. Right? And for it to squeeze really hard, it needs to come down and trap shorts. Okay, uh, it needs to pull back hard, pretending that it's gonna it's gonna fail, and then shorts will start piling in on each pop, and then eventually break out, and then trap these shorts, and then these shorts will squeeze it up higher and higher. Now, ninety five is a good area I want to watch, and I will make my plan. According to that, I am anticipating a gap up and over around this 92 area tomorrow, okay, in the pre-market. And as it comes up close to the 95, I'll probably start uh, starter size sizing in uh, from the 94 to 94, 94.25 area. I'll start sizing in and then with my plan being at 95 would be my stop out. Okay, or there is a second way of shorting this is basically just let it rip, right? You just let this thing rip. I do have this plan of 95, so I'm going to watch it and see what it does at 95. And from there, if I miss that first initial pullback, I'm going to wait for the lower high or double top setup from there. And by that time, it'll probably be around noon or 1130, late midday, early lunch. And I'm going to be looking for the backside and I'll be shorting the backside and bringing it down. Okay. So target, as far as target goes, uh, the $90 is a great target because it's a psychological whole number, right? Um, I also want to mark off the highs of yesterday during the earnings pop, the initial pop here, which is eighty nine fifty. And then finally, I want to mark off 88 as well. So on the 88 mark, if I come across here on 88, it's basically the highs of uh, yesterday, but 
not including the after hours, like before they announced earnings, right? So I do like this mark. You see how this mark reacted very well in this area today, okay? And also this area, it's basically right here on top of this doji. So that's my target. If the stock dips, however, and dumps right out the gates at the open, this is the spot where I'll be looking for that bounce, give or take a little bit uh, wiggle room here. Give or take a little bit of wiggle room. This is the spot where I'll be looking for that bounce or the double bottom or the higher low. And I want to be taking this long if it shows me that buy signal. Um, because I know if it dumps out at the open, it's going to trap some shorts. And uh, a lot of the dumb money will think, oh, they're going to, uh, will think that the stock is uh, on its first day down and they're going to try to hammer it in. So in, in a sense, trapping these shorts. Now, as it comes right back up, um, it's going to get that squeeze effect and we're going to squeeze back right up. Um, so that's the main play on MDB. I know the analysis was a little bit longer, but I actually did a lot of, uh, of research on this, uh, on the new side, on the rating side. So that's why it took so long. And to be quite honest, the play itself, it's more of an advanced type of short play, uh, which I have been uh, applying a lot in my previous trading history. Uh, before I did the small account challenge, I was actually pretty successful at parabolic shorts. So this is actually going to be one of my main watches, kind of like the short I did today on AMD. So uh, except AMD had, had a risk level. Um, the only difference is this stock does not have a risk level or previous resistance mark. So I'm going to have to guess where the stock is going to sell off. And my first guess here is 95. All right, MongoDB. Next up, we have DG Dollar General. Uh, Dollar General had earnings a couple days ago, and when it came down hard today, it basically come right back up. What I'm looking for is a short and a rejection signal. Uh, the 107 is a very key mark because as you can see, you draw this horizontal line across both the daily chart and, and the intraday chart. The 107 is uh, very key, is a nice round hole number, but I'm also going to give 108 credit as well because on the days of the earnings, the reaction, it basically hit that 108 and failed from there. Now what this is, is this to me looks more like of a looks more like of a squeeze action here. So tomorrow, if it doesn't gap up, if it just fails out of the gates, I'm just gonna let it fail and watch for the bounce. Uh, my target is actually 105. Um, I believe I put DG on my watch list a couple of night ago, and I basically nailed it. I said uh, buy DG at the dip on 104 or 105, like if 105 reclaims uh, long it, long the sucker, right? And that's basically what happened. It really likes the whole numbers here, right? It dip and held 104, came back down, held 105, and here's your first higher low, right? And from then on, it was uh, basically history. It was a great long three points gain up to the highs. Now, 108 though, is uh, very key as if the stock comes back up to 108, it would actually make what we call in the industry a double top. And double tops are, uh, are a very good and viable short entry here. So I'm going to expect if it breaks out of 107, I'm going to expect 108 to hold it down. And um, if it busts through 108, then uh, so be it, right? Cut my losses quickly and dump the thesis. Dollar General. Next up, we have a SIG, SIG, Cigna Jeweler, Jewelers. Okay. Uh, this was a, also an earnings play today. This morning, it had a bad earnings reaction. The stock dumped a lot, right? And from there, it was basically oversold. So it bounced and uh, it recovered a little bit. Now, what I want to talk about on SIG is that the stock is on SSR, 
However, I do like this chart because uh, of the very easy areas that you can look at, right? I mean, if you're looking at the 40 mark, you can basically see that the stock bounced off it all day. It's a nice key psychological whole number, right? And the 44 mark is basically the top of today's open and the earnings reaction. So if I were to zoom in a little bit, see how it rejected 44 right at the open? I mean, if I had been watching this this morning, this would have been like fantastic. Uh, looking at Looking at the daily chart though, I think today uh, or tomorrow on SIG, I think the stock will play around in and around this range of forty dollars to forty four dollars okay uh, personally, because it is an earnings reaction loser, I am looking for a short on this um, scrolling back a little bit i 'm looking at if the forty dollars mark snaps, which is a very key support, if it snaps though. The next area of support is actually at 37.50 to 38. So I want to show you how I found this mark right here, but let me mark that off. Okay, 37.38. It's basically right here in March of 2018, right? As you can see, let me move the clock out of the way. As you can see, this was uh, an earnings reaction, okay? And it had that massive dump day. Now, it had also uh, great volume, significant volume. The next day, it dumped down, got came back up, and then got sold down again. So tomorrow, it basically could be this. It could come right back up on a cover pop and then right up to the 44 area and it gets sold right back off. So... Let's scroll out here. Yeah, it could cover pop right into this 44 area or test the highs of today and then come right back down. Now, will it be able to snap 40? I really don't know. But if it snaps 40, this is the key support that it might bounce off of, right? It's the next level of key support where it has significant volume. Looking on this green candle here, it opened at 37.60. It's basically the lows. And here we have 3760s as well, or 3755 as a close. All right. So the stock basically bounced off this level. And of course, I'm not going to uh, rule out the whole number of 38 as well. So if 40 snaps, if 40 snaps, there is no other major support holding it up until we reach this. Uh, 37.50 to 38 level. I mean, this massive green candle bar is basically this. So it doesn't even play tomorrow. It's, uh, however, the prior candle is actually around the 44 area. So it makes a great resistance. Okay. Um, aside from that, that's what I'm going to be looking for. I'm going to be looking for a pop and drop. Uh, I'll only be looking for trade signals around the 44 area and the 40 area as well. Next up, we have KR. Uh, Kroger announced earnings. And uh, right now in my notes, I have the area of $30 and $29 mark off. Okay, so I'm going to mark that off. Tomorrow, I think the stock is going to play within this uh, sideways range tomorrow. Uh, the stock is currently holding at around 29.67. Uh, the reason why I picked 30, I want to scroll in a little bit. First of all, as a key psychological whole number. Second of all, if you look across this horizontal line, there's a lot of chart resistance here. And the previous day where it had massive volume, it's basically where it topped out. So on the intraday here, I want to mark off 30 for you and show you guys why I picked the $30 mark. Right, so that's the $30 mark right here. Um, it might pop its head over a little bit, right? Uh, it might pop its head over a little bit up to this area, so I will anticipate it right about the 3015 area, as you can see, 
the high of this candle, the close of this candle, uh, the close of this high and low of or open and close of this doji candle, right? So anywhere from 30 to 30, 15, we have a very concise chart resistance area. Um, however, I mean, if it does pop up and over, it would also mean that we are breaking the 9 EMA. Uh, it doesn't really matter though, because I mean, the stock did break the 9 EMA in the past and got hammered right back down. So uh, I'm not, I'm just going to use it as more of a guide. I'm not going to rely on it as a resistance mark. Um, scrolling back on this chart, it does respect the 9 EMA okay. I wouldn't say quite well. It does respect it. But look at all these little pops above the 9 EMA, how it got sold right back off, right? So if you're using just the 9 EMA, you can really get faked out. Uh, I rather use it as a guide and um, risk off levels here. So I'm looking for a pop into the 30 mark and then short it right back down into the keyhole number of 29. Uh, 29.50 as it come down it might give it a little bit of um, a little bit of trouble as it comes down as you can see there's a lot of support here right um, there's not much range on this chart it's more like a 80 cents average true range however I did put this uh, ticker on my watch list just because Kroger itself it trades really, really clean. After the initial open and all that, all that massive emotions coming in uh, within the first 15 minutes, everything else is very clean. And then the and then the the chart actually settles down and trend really nicely. Uh, not to mention that. Uh, the spread on it is very tight. It's about, I believe, if I remember correctly, last time I played it, it's three cents. So definitely a good chart to keep a side watch on. That's KR. AOBC announced earnings after hours and they had a positive reaction. Um, the average true range for the stock is also about 80 cents only. Uh, currently, the stock, uh, the earnings was a beat, and uh, I am looking for more upside. Currently, the stock is sitting around the 1409 area, so let's mark that off right here, right at this prior resistance. So we'll call it 14, 1409. That's where the stock is at right now, okay? Um, that means it actually cleared the 50. Now, looking at this chart, I'm actually looking for a dip right out of the gates, okay? Because uh, looking at today, when the buyers came in, I'm looking at uh, around the $12 mark to the 1180 mark here. This is where all the gamblers came in and bought the stock and held it long to play through the earnings. Now, they hit the jackpot. Right, they basically just made two bucks a share. Tomorrow, as we come into major uh, chart resistance here, I think what they're going to do is take profits right away because they just hit the jackpot. I think they were only expecting maybe a little bit to thirteen dollars, but they probably got an extra dollar out of there. So if I were them, I pull profits right out the gates, and uh, I'm looking for a dip right at the open. Now, where is the dip going to hold? Um, I'm going to look for the hold here at 1350. Okay. What 1350 is, it's basically this doji candle, this green candle. Okay. And uh, it's, the, it's the bottom of this candle. And I'm going to give it a little bit of wiggle room as well. I'm going to call it uh, 1350 to 1335. Okay. So this is the support zone that I'm anticipating the stock to hold and uh, and rip back up. Since it is an earnings winner, I do anticipate another rip. So right out the gates, if it dips, it's going to trap some shorts. All right. And then once it does, like it holds and double bottoms or shows me a higher low and starts ripping again, it's going to make like a red to green move. 
and that in itself is going to get the shorts to squeeze. I'm going to look for it to squeeze back above 14 and from there uh, target 1450. So there's both a long and a short play here on AOBC. Next up, OKTA. Now, OKTA made a very nice bullish engulfing candle today on the daily chart, and it also had a massive uh, relative volume as well. It was basically an earnings winner, I believe. Okay, now what I want to play or my plan for this stock is basically it's a side watch for me. I'm going to watch anywhere from I'm going to watch the the I'm going to expect the stock or anticipate the stock to make like a sideways consolidation day after this massive pull up here. Uh, the key resistance I'm looking at is the 68 mark as it bounced late day and failed from there. You can also see how 68 made a very nice floor in, uh, during the lunchtime in the afternoon. So the 68 mark is very key. Uh, as far as support level, I'm looking at 65 here, which is a key psychological whole number. And if I put a line here on 65 on the daily chart, you can see how well it respected the prior days on the 65 level and uh, a couple months back as well. So 65 uh, should be able to hold it. And if it snaps it, the next level down on, on this chart, we're looking around the 64. So yeah, so support 65, 64. I'm gonna look for a dip at the open. Actually, I'm gonna look for a pop and watch the 68 area and see if it can actually uh, hold it down. If it pops up above 68, reclaims and starts uh, holding and makes higher low early during the day or make like a double bottom where there's still significant volume, uh, that would mean that the stock is long actually. And I and you can actually take it long risking the 68. Now, where would your target be if you were to take it long? Well, test out high of days, the 70 mark. Right, um, coming back here at this cluster on the daily chart in September here, the 70 mark is pretty key. If it breaks out of the 70 though, which I highly doubt, it would magnet to 72.5. All right, so that's OKTA. And finally, ATVI. Uh, the reason I did ATVI, it's actually gonna be on a side watch for me. Um, one of uh, my YouTube subscribers uh, watched my watch list last night and asked me a question. Um, they basically asked if I think ATVI is still in a downtrend and they said it's looking a little bullish. Well, to be quite honest, I don't know if the stock is still going to come down. Uh, I'm going to flip back to my notes from last night real quick. Just give me uh, two seconds here. ATVI, I called out resistance at 47, 47 and a half, and basically the stock has reclaimed it and recovered. All right. Uh, however, I am looking at this 4850s level. I want to see what it does from here. Okay, tomorrow. It's uh, very close to it, so it might get back up and over and starts holding, and it could rip. However, we do have this daily chart 90 MA coming down on it. And then along the lines of here, we have major, major resistance at the 50 mark. Now, do I see the stock coming to the 50? Not likely. I think it will take a lot, especially in this current market. Uh, I'm not too uh, excited about longing anything right now. Now, another reason why I put ATVI on the, on the side watch here is I want to bring out something that I usually don't use, which is the Fibonacci's. Let me see here. Bop, bop, bop. Am I doing this right? No. Okay, should be the other way around. 
So basically from the highs to the lows of this massive down day. Okay, uh, 46, 45. 100%. Well, I'm not usually a Fibonacci user, so I'm not really that great with it. But I mean, when I did this while I was prepping my watch list, I found something very interesting. All right. So the Fibonacci levels, right? Uh, we are coming, this yellow line is the 50% mark retracement. And then uh, this 4837 mark here. This is uh, the 30, I believe the 30 something, right? 38.2, or wait, 61.8 retracement mark. Okay, so this is the mark I want to be looking for tomorrow for rejection. Okay, and uh, I will also be paying attention to uh, this 49 area as well, right at the 50% mark here. So Keep that on the side watch. I mean, Fibonacci's I don't use at all, but I, I like to play with it because inside the chat room here at Trick Trades, um, we have a couple of moderators and a good friend of mine. They really like Fibonacci's and they, they use it and they apply it on a daily basis. And it actually works pretty friggin' amazing. So they're more like a guide of kind of telling you when the stocks will uh, reverse so um i'll be i'll be putting the fibs on this and uh paying attention to it tomorrow but i personally won't be trading atvi so that's my watch list for the evening uh thank you for watching i know the list was a little long i did have a lot to cover hope you guys uh understand what i was trying to convey hope you guys uh can see right into my mind and how i think and uh, hopefully learn how to prep your own watch list as well Make sure you hit the thumbs up and the like button and subscribe and because uh, I do post content daily and uh, have a great evening. Ciao.